Hello and welcome to my video. Have you ever heard the term safety critical software and wondered what that is? Maybe in the context of embedded systems? Let's find out today in this video. But before we do, let me first introduce myself. My name is Florian. I'm a computer science professor specializing in embedded systems here in Germany. And I have more than 20 years of experience in software engineering and also have worked in the field of safety critical embedded software. And my mission is to help you making your next step in your software engineering career to help you grow as a software engineer. So if you are ready to take this next step or are interested in what potential next steps could be, then please subscribe to my channel. Now let's get back to safety critical software and what that is. And before we define what safety critical software is, we first need to define what actually safety means in our context. And we use the word safety here, and I'm going to quote this here. We use the word safety here in the sense that we say it's the freedom from those conditions that cause death, injury, illness, damage to or loss of equipment or property or environmental harm. So safety means we don't want to hurt or kill anybody and we don't want to damage the environment and or other equipment or property. Now the question is, what is then safety critical software? The IEEE defines safety critical software in the following way. Safety critical software is software whose use in a system can result in unacceptable risk. Safety critical software includes software whose operational failure to operate can lead to a hazardous state, software intended to recover from a hazardous state, and software intended to mitigate the severity of an accident. So what we can learn from this and what also is accepted in the industry is that software itself is not able to harm anybody, to hurt someone, to kill someone, but it's always uh, to be seen in combination with the system that's either controlled by the software or monitored by the software. And if the system has a capability to harm or kill someone and is controlled or monitored by software, then this software becomes safety critical. So in other words, safety critical software is software that potentially, if it has a malfunction, can hurt or kill people, damage the environment and or damage equipment or property. And of course, an example of safety critical software would be software in a car that is controlling your lane keep assist functionality or your adaptive cruise control, right? So uh, if you imagine that you are on the highway and you have your adaptive cruise control set and suddenly your car accelerates and collides with the car in front of you or suddenly changes lanes and, and crashes into another car, right? Uh, that would be safety critical. Similarly, if we talk about software in an airplane, like an autopilot function or something like that, that would also be considered safety critical. And of course, if you develop safety critical software, safety critical systems as a whole, you have to take special care to ensure that your systems are safe because you don't want to hurt people. You don't want to kill people. And uh, that's for sure for ethical reasons, but also because um, that would put you out of business, right? If your um, products are killing people. And apart from that, there are also international standards, regulations and norms in place that depending on the domain you are in, precisely define what you need to do in order to develop a safe system. If we talk about automotive, that would be, for instance, the ISO 26262. If we talk about 
aerospace systems that would be the DO-178C and if we talk about other electrical and electronic equipment that would be the IEC-61508 and all these standards have things in common and it's five principles that they sort of follow or that, that you in general should follow independent from norms and standards and those five principles I will now briefly explain. The first of the five principles is well documented requirements and architecture. Of course it's essential that when you build a safety critical system that you precisely know how the system is going to work and that later on you also know how to test your system. And in order to be able to do that you need to have well-written requirements, you need to have a thorough architecture and that's both for system requirements and system architecture as well as software requirements and software architecture. So that's the first principle. There is a high emphasis on those kind of specifications. The second principle is a disciplined implementation of the process. When you are developing a safety critical system, you need to rigorously apply your process to all parts of the system and to make sure that everybody does his or her job and that the process is followed. Yeah, that's one of the key elements that help you ensuring safety of your product, that the process is followed. Number three is thorough testing at all levels, right? You don't just do unit level tests or you just do system level tests. You do testing at all levels. Um, you start with unit level tests and you do integration tests and you test the software overall, then you do hardware software integration and test this and then you do overall system tests. And sometimes, yes, you might even repeat the same tests on different levels. But that's important to ensure that if there is something wrong with your system, you detect this. And part of this testing is also things like dynamic and static code analysis that is done on the software to detect all kinds of defects and bugs that you might have there. Number four, a safety mindset. So the idea is that you really put safety of the product front and center. That's the key attribute of your system. And to support this, there are all kinds of safety analysis in your workflow, in your process. So the idea being that you challenge your system, you always think about what could go wrong here, what could be potential hazards, what could be potential failure modes in order to define and specify countermeasures or at least detection mechanisms so that you can ensure the safety of your overall product. So the key idea is you challenge your product during development in such a way that you find the bugs, you find the problems already in development and not later on when the system is in production and is in the field. And then lastly, well qualified personal, right? Imagine you are sitting in your new car and for the first time you use the autonomous driving feature on the highway. Would you rather have this feature being developed by a newbie developer or by a seasoned expert who did this for years. Of course you would prefer the expert and that's the same thing in general, right? So in general companies that develop safety critical systems need to ensure that there is the right qualification available for their engineers, that they are adequately trained, that they know what they are doing and that's very very important that this is the case, right? No experiments with safety. So I hope this video was able to give you an insight on what safety critical embedded systems are or safety critical systems in general. I hope you have learned something. What are your experience? Are you already in the field of embedded systems? Was there something that surprised you here in this video? Please let me know 
in the comments below. And of course, if you found this video helpful, if you liked this video or at least found it entertaining, then please smash the like button. That always is appreciated. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, learn more about software engineering, embedded systems and so on, then please consider subscribing to the channel so that I can see you in the next video.